Good afternoon. Uh, this is a unforeseen lecture. And uh, this morning we had bone tumors. Now we go to soft tissue tumors. So imaging of tumor and tumor-like lesions of soft tissue. This is the program. First detection, then local staging, then diagnosis, differential diagnosis, and post-treatment follow-up. Um, soft tissue tumors are not frequent. And uh, for diagnostic workup, when patient comes to you, I have a mass, I have a lump, you should start with ultrasound. And when you have ultrasound, it is a cyst or it is not a cyst. And if it's not a cyst, you do MRI, always. Um, sometimes in the further follow-up, you will need CT chest and bone scintigraphy if it's a malignant lesion. So what will we do for local staging? I will show imaging strategies, use of gadolinium, and give uh, um, suggestions for biopsy. So MR imaging is very good for soft tissues because you see the relation of the tumor to the muscles, nerves, vessels, and joints. And in some types of tumors, you can make a diagnosis. You can say, that's the name of the lesion. That's not frequent. In most cases of soft tissue tumors, your answer is, I don't know what the lesion is. But I will help you to, to make a diagnosis in a few of these lesions. Just as in bone tumors, the first sequence is longitudinal sequence, T1, and it can be sagittal or coronal, for instance, here in the thigh. If you have a lesion which is posterior, you take a sagittal view. This is done with the body coil, and then you ch can change coil if you want to the local coil. What images do you need? Um, you always need longitudinal images, coronal or sagittal, T1, and then we take T1 fat suppressed protein density and T1 plus gadolinium axial slices, and then we do post contrast. You can change from um, T1 without to with fat suppression, but you should always have one with and without fat suppression before contrast and one with and without fat suppression after contrast. You use gadolinium to differentiate between viable parts in the tumor and necrotic parts of the tumor. So here you see the viable parts of the tumor which do enhance and the necrosis which does not enhance. You also need gadolinium for selection of the biopsy site so which way will you go? I offer you several options and this is described in the literature. There is compartmental anatomy. You should find this article to show you how to go to the tumor. You should not contaminate unaffected compartments. So this is the reference of the article. Just as with bone tumors, the order is first MRI and then biopsy, not the other way as shown here. You give this image to your colleagues who are too fast. So this is the same as for bone tumors. We want to show to the colleague where is the most active part of the tumor. We will show them how to go to the tumor and if we have the patient after biopsy, it's very difficult for us. You have hemorrhage, you have edema, and you will lose the characteristics to give a name to the tumor. So that's why we want to have imaging before biopsy. So now we will try to give a name 
to the tumor, and that's difficult in soft tissue tumors. I will give you general principles and then specific diagnosis. So, in fact, the message of this uh, slide is that there is a high specificity in a few lesions, and this means that if you have the specific sign, you can make the diagnosis and give the name. But in the majority of the lesions, sensitivity is low. So in the majority of lesions, your answer will be, I don't know the name of the lesion. You can use these articles, these two articles from Kranzdorf, which are review articles of more than 50,000 tumors. And they give you a reference population. So if you have a child of seven years with a mass in the tie, you look in the table, child, seven years, tie, mass, and it will give you the frequency of lesions. The name of the most frequent lesion in a child of seven years in the tie is that. So that's very interesting to have a first ID. And it gives you for all ages, men, women, and location, different locations. So that's a good start. Um, so here you have examples of frequencies. You know that lipoma is a very frequent lesion in the benign and that myxofibrosarcoma is a frequent lesion in the malignant uh, part. But this does not help you to make the specific di diagnosis in your patient. So which signs give you a high suspicion of malignancy if you have a lesion more than three centimeters with central necrosis, deep to fascia, located in the thigh or the groin, inhomogeneous on T1, and early and fast enhancement on dynamic MRI, then you can say this is very likely a malignant lesion. You can use the location to help you to make a diagnosis. Um, I give an example, for instance, uh, here, this one, abdomen. Um, abdominal desmoid, which is Aggressive fibromatosis is a frequent lesion in the abdominal wall. It's connected to the fascia of the muscles. In the knee, PVNS, pigmented villonodular synovitis, is a frequent soft tissue tumor. So it can help you, but it's not always the best. This is a typically lesion where the location helps you to give the name. Um, a lesion which is uh, located deep to the scapula here is a lastofibroma dorsi. It consists of elastic fibrous tissue, a typically soft tissue lesion in that location. Um, it can be symmetrical, it can be left and right side. Multiplicity can help you to give the name to the lesion. For instance, neurofibromatosis will help you to see many uh, worm-like lesions. They occur along the nerves, so this is easy to make the diagnosis. Maybe you can use the shape and the pattern of the lesion to try to give a name to the lesion. So we have a lesion which is serpiginous, like serpent. You will see it in hemangioma. Um, you have broccoli, which looks like lipoma arborescens. This is a fatty tumor in a joint. A target sign is uh, sometimes seen in neurogenic tumors. So there are a lot of signs which can help you. And now we come to some signs which are very interesting. You should study the signal intensity of the lesions on T1 and on T2. And most lesions are as specific. So 
dark gray on T1, light gray or white on T2. So this helps you to say, I don't know which lesion it is. So you can't help it. But if you have a lesion with a high signal intensity, white on T1, it's fat or blood, methemoglobin or melanin. If it's dark gray on T1, very bright on T2, it's a myxoma, mics with liposarcoma or a cyst. And if it's dark on T2, this means you have calcification, you have very high flow, hemosiderin or dense collagen. So we will use these signs now to give names to the lesion. First, let's look at high signal intensity on T1. It can be fat, methemoglobin or melanin. This is an easy one. So we have here a fatty lesion, um, here fatty lesion. It's homogeneous, sharply delineated, maybe a little fibrous strand within it. This is easy, it's an intramuscular lipoma. But you have also the malignant counterpart where you have only a little bit of fat and a lot of malignant fatty tissue which loses the bright signal on T1. So a mass with a focal high signal intensity is probably a liposarcoma. Be careful, some malignant soft tissue tumors may bleed and methemoglobin may also cause high signal intensity. Let's look at this tumor. Um, we have several images. We have T1, uh, these two images, and we have T2. And when we look in detail, we have here serpiginous uh, area and we have also fatty areas. So the combination of focal fatty areas with serpiginous areas, which are high on T2, is a hemangioma. And many hemangiomas have the combination of fat and vessels. This patient has a mass in the calf and we see high signal intensity at the periphery of the lesion and dark areas in the center of the lesion. And this is typical for a hematoma. So the extracellular methemoglobin has a high signal intensity on T1. This is easy, low signal intensity on T1, very bright on T2, and when you give gadolinium, you only see a little bit enhancement of a very thin wall. This is a cyst. Now let's look at dark gray on T1 and very bright on T2. So we have this patient with a mass lesion in the thigh and there are two components. One component here is bright on T1, dark on fat saturation. That's the fatty component. You can see it here also. And then we have the dark gray on T1, very bright on T2. Uh, and this is the mics with component. So the combination of these two gives you the name of a mics with liposarcoma, which is a malignant uh, fatty tumor. You can give gadolinium to this patient and then you will see enhancement. And if you perform dynamic contrast enhanced MRI, you can follow the distribution of gadolinium into the tumor. And we follow this patient at one second, two seconds, 10 seconds and 40 seconds. And what we see is very early enhancement in this peripheral part of the tumor. So this is the most malignant part of the tumor. And we should say to the surgeon that to do the biopsy in that part. So he can see this is a high grade liposarcoma. Another sign which can help you is a dark signal on T2, so low signal intensity on T2, which can be hemosiderin, dense collagen, flow voids, or calcification. 
Let's first look at PVNS, which is pigmented villonodular synovitis. It's a benign lesion. It occurs in a joint or in a bursa, but it can also occur in a tendon sheet. And then the pathologists give another name to the lesion. They give it the name of giant cell tumor of tendon sheet. But in fact, it's just the same as pigmented villonodular synovitis. So we have low signal intensity on T2 and T1 due to presence of hemosiderin. Some examples. Uh, here we have the pigmented villonodular synovitis, so very dark on T2. And this patient has a large effusion, whereas this patient has a lot of hemosiderin and almost no effusion. There is one special form of PVNS, which is the solitary PVNS, and it has a special name, nodular synovitis. So you will see a patient with a dark lesion on T1, and here it is intermediate, but you see the dark areas in the tumor, and this gives you the name of nodular synovitis. So it's connected to the synovium of the uh, joint. When this lesion occurs in a tendon sheet, especially in the hand and in the feet, uh, the name is giant cell tumor of tendon sheet and you always have a near connection to the tendons. So it will be dark on T1, dark on T2. Another lesion which has low signal intensities um, is musculoaponeurotic fibromatosis. The old names of the lesion are desmoid and aggressive fibromatosis. So that's the same, but the new name is musculoaponeurotic fibromatosis because it consists of collagen tissue, fibrous tissue, and it's connected to the aponeurosis of the muscles. Be careful, the lesion um, is not homogeneous, uh, where is, yeah, it's not homogeneous. So if you look at this lesion, you will have dark signal intensities, intermediate signal intensities, and high signal intensities. But what you need to make the diagnosis is to look at the areas with low signal intensity. So low on T1 and low on T2, these parts are dense collagen tissue. Look at this patient. We have the patient in T1 coronal image and we made the same patient after gadolinium. You see that there is dark areas, for instance here on below side, there is no enhancement in this part. It remains dark. This part of the tumor is dense collagen tissue and there is no uh, activity anymore. On the counterpart, when we look at this lesion, it becomes bright after gadolinium. This is the active part of the tumor. It's a young part, it is growing, and this is the aggressive part of the tumor. The upper part is mixed with fibrous tissue and active tissue. So all these tumors with these names, you can make the diagnosis. I have mentioned lipoma, which is easy. You can have superficial lipoma and you can have deep-seated lipoma, intramuscular lipoma. In deep-seated lipomas, be careful to show uh, nerves in the, in the lipoma and also show the extensions to the surgeons. If there is a nerve they, and the patient has no pain or complaints, leave it alone and don't resect it. The liposarcoma is, it looks like a lipoma, but it's not homogeneous. You will have thick strands. So when I return, it is allowed to have small strands, very thin, less than one millimeter in a lipoma, no problem. But if you have 
thick strands more than two millimeter of if you have uh, nodules enhancing nodules be careful this is a low-grade liposarcoma we have seen the mixed with liposarcoma which consists of lipomatous tissue and myxoid tissue which will have a very bright signal on T2 and a very fast enhancement for hemangiomas sometimes you need uh, x-rays to see calcifications flebolites and we will look for the combination of fat in the margin of the lesion and on T2 we will look for serpiginous areas which are large vessels so combination of T1 and T2 helps you to make the diagnosis we also use dynamic contrast enhanced MRI for hemangiomas because we see two types one is the fast enhancing hemangioma which is often capillary hemangioma with high flow uh, then you can do embolization on the counterpart you have slow enhancing uh, angiomas with large vessels cavernous hemangioma you need surgery or direct uh, uh, alcoholization you can give the name to peripheral name, uh, nerve sheet tumors like neurofibroma or schwannoma. Uh, these are the benign uh, tumors here, so this is benign. Uh, plexiform neurofibroma is also benign and occurs in neurofibromatosis. And then the name of the malignant part is malignant peripheral nerve sheet tumor. You can make the diagnosis of a neurinoma, which is a schwannoma, when on ultrasound, when you see the nerve entering and maybe leaving uh, the, the, the tumor. And if you are lucky, you will see the same image on MRI with the nerve entering and leaving the tumor. The signal is as specific, it's bright on T2 and dark on T1. It is a very high perfusion if you do dynamic MRI, so don't be afraid, it's benign, but with a high perfusion. When you see these uh, worms like that, the diagnosis is easy, it's along the nerve, and you can make the diagnosis of neurofibromatosis, often multiple lesions. A malignant peripheral nerve sheet tumor is more difficult, it looks like any malignant tumor, it enhances, it has necrosis, and only when it's along the nerve you can make the diagnosis of malignant peripheral nerve sheet tumor. Otherwise, it is difficult to give it a name. So many lesions have a uh, low sensitivity and you cannot give the name of the tumor. And I give you a few examples, all these tumors which are listed here, um, they look alike. You have low signal intensity on T1, you have high signal intensity on T2, you have an aggressive lesion, and the center of the lesion is in the soft tissues. I don't know the name of the tumor, so it can be anything, only biopsy can give you the real name. There's one case where you should take care and where you should make the diagnosis. Sometimes patients present with a soft tissue tumor in a muscle. If you don't know the name, maybe try to make an X-ray and when you see a calcified or ossified egg, you have the diagnosis of myositis ossificans. And if you don't see it, you do CT scan because you will see the typical calcification and ossification first at the periphery of the lesion. So that's the task of the radiologist to make this diagnosis. And finally we have a follow-up of soft tissue tumors after treatment. There the rule is the next that every white mass on MRI after treatment is a recurrence until you prove that it's not a recurrence. And to prove this 
you should do dynamic contrast enhanced MRI. So let's look at this example. This patient had a malignant soft tissue tumor. It was resected and we do follow-up in the first two years every three months and from year two to five every six months. So the patient is here coming back at month nine. This is the reference after three months we start and we take this image as reference image. So we did see that edema, postoperative edema has disappeared and we are happy with the patient after nine months. Now we see the patient at 12 months and this area is becoming thicker, it's larger than at nine months, so we do a dynamic contrast enhanced MRI and when we look at this area it has a very fast enhancement. So we know that this is a recurrence. So every white mass on T2 should have dynamic <coughs> contrast enhanced MRI. Other things you can find after surgery is, for instance, this patient you have seen with aggressive fibromatosis, had surgery and you can find a seroma, high signal intensity on T2, don't touch it. Sometimes you can see bleeding in seromas, also don't touch it, do no puncture. And finally, here we have a patient again with a soft tissue mass after surgery if we do dynamic MRI and there is almost no enhancement, this is reactive tissue, uh, no problem at all. This is not recurrent soft tissue tumor. If you want to read more, there is a book on soft tissue tumors and um, thank you for the attention.